Hi, this is James McClendon. Today we're going to talk about making a knife from a file. Uh, one of the advantages of doing this is that you don't have to heat treat the blade. That's already been done for you. Uh, it will need uh, some further temper cycles because as it is, a file is uh, too hard for a blade. But uh, this can be done with just a just in a kitchen oven. Uh, one of the things I like to do is start off with the proper file. Uh, some files can be case hardened, others uh, I found really don't make good knives. The two files that I found that consistently make good knives are your, your Nicholson and your old Black Diamonds. Uh, if you find the old Black Diamond files, those make most excellent knives. Uh, I've tried other file brands, uh, Simmons and uh, some others and, and really haven't been pleased with the performance of the blade. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the blade and we're going to draw a profile. We're going to cut the tang off and we're going to save it. I've seen some knife makers, they'll use this tang as the tang on the knife. I don't recommend doing this because, as you can see from this tang, it's been bent. And what happens is, if you bend this, this thing back out straight, it's going to break. So, uh, if you ever see a file knife with broke tang, this is usually the, uh, the culprit. Uh, it can be bent once, but when you bend it back straight, it weakens the steel and eventually it'll break due to metal fatigue. So, uh, never use the tang unless it's a brand new file, and even then, I, I really don't like doing that. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw out uh, the blade profile and uh, cut, the, uh, cut the stamped tang there off because I like to use that as the um, pommel cow. Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start by drawing in what I want the blade to look like. I'm going to cut the tang off because I'm going to save that for my pommel cow. Using a uh, slicer wheel, I'm going to slice out the, um, the tang area there. Now, when you're down here, you're going to have a bit of ricasso. You want to keep the blade cool because if uh, if you overheat it, it's going to run the temper and you start, start back at square one. Uh, so don't let it overheat. I like to use a uh, softer cutting wheel. Uh, typically those are going to be uh, your cheaper wheels, uh, but they tend to shed off a little faster and don't build up as much heat, which will run the blade. So like I said, I'm going to take the, uh, take the slicer wheel and I'm going to cut this thing out. Okay, I got the uh, blade profile roughed in. Uh, we're going to get on the belt sander and uh, start grinding the bevels.
Okay, the rough grind is in. Um, it's ready now to go in the oven at uh, 430 degrees for an hour. Okay, the blade's out of temper now. I'm going to cut my tang in. Um, as you can see, I took a, a sharpie and, and marked it out. Um, you can use a side grinder uh, for the first part. But I kind of come up with uh, putting a cutting wheel on my on my bench grinder. It allows me to use two hands and, and make for a steadier cut. I'm just going to use it to cut my shoulders uh, in across it. Uh, I wouldn't use it for this because uh, the deeper in you go, the, the higher the danger is of it grabbing. And we don't want that to happen. Uh, be sure to wear your gloves and uh, safety gear for this because uh, it is very dangerous. Okay, my shoulders are cut in now. Uh, we're going to put the pan in. Okay, the tang is now cut in. Uh, we're going to go back to the grinder and finish put, pushing the uh, edge bevels back. Okay, here's what you want your soft back draw to look like. This way the back of the spine of the knife is uh, nice and soft. I've also heated the tang up 
where it's uh, at a spring temper. It's nice to be able to take a pretty good bit of abuse before it would break. Okay, so I got a guard made from bronze. Fit it to the naphtane. You want the fit to be nice and snug. Uh, any gaps in it's going to uh, gonna hurt the final look of the knife. The next step is I'm gonna braze on a quarter inch piece of uh, threaded uh, rod. This will allow me to screw the handle together. Uh, the reason why I had to fit the guard first is because the rod is bigger around to, than the uh, thickness of the tang of the knife. Uh, so I got to put the guard on first. So we're going to do that step next. Okay, the brazing is done now. Um, as you can see, it's pretty strong. Uh, this particular brazing compound I'm using is a nickel, uh, nickel copper alloy for uh, brazing on the teeth on saw blades. So it's, it's got a tensile strength of about 70 to 80,000 psi which is stronger than a 7018 welding rod uh, but stay seal 56 silver brazen alloy will do just fine on this also our next step is start fitting the handle